Welcome back, Shalligators. Welcome back to Vlogmas. Okay, Christmas is upon us, and you're probably freaking out about what to get your boyfriend, fiance, or whatever, the dude in your life for Christmas without breaking the bank. Because, you know, man, today I am going to give you my own personal, and I think fucking bomb, gift suggestion for a guy that's going to cost you like maybe 20 bucks. In fact, you could probably do it essentially for free because it's a gift that exists in two places, his imagination and your vagina. Yes! Okay. So before we get started, Shalligators, you know something I love. No, not the Golden Girls, no, not Justin Bieber, therapy. I'm a big fan of therapy because as much as I help you here, hey, I'm a pop star, not a doctor. And there's nothing that can replace actual behavioral therapy, but it's really exhausting to think about going out and finding a therapist and blah, 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 blah. Wouldn't it be nice if you could do it from home? Have a little counselor right in your pocket. Well, with Cerebral, you can. Cerebral is a mental health platform that helps you not only manage your medication, but deal with things like anxiety, ADHD, insomnia, general stuff for a flat monthly rate. In most cases, you can see a prescribing provider ASAP, like 20 minutes. Plus, you can use Cerebral with or without insurance. That means therapy with Cerebral can cost three times less than traditional therapy. Cerebral offers three plans, so it's like having a full mental health team on call wherever and whenever you need it. So if you would like to take the next step in clearing out the cobwebs in your brain, living a better life, and being a more authentic you, go ahead and click the link in my bio to start your first month for just 30 dollars flat rate because the first step to being an alpha female is feeling good okay let's talk okay so i feel like it's easier to buy for like moms dads you know it's like they're very specific as they get older or whatever boyfriends it's like oh because a lot of dudes they don't really like stuff or the stuff they do like is like video games or motor oil or tires i don't know whatever the fuck boys like but you know what every dude likes sex now look, I'm gonna say that if you don't have sex, like sex sex, did I have to do that? Do we all know what sex is? Okay, thanks. <laughs> if you're not like actually having sex with your boyfriend, you can still modify this in a way that's gonna be fun and sexy. It's not about going all the way. It can exist like, not exactly like in your badge, but just in the general area. What you are going to give your boyfriend is fantasy. Now, I've been listening to this podcast called The Operator, and it's about like the history of 1-900 numbers. You might not know what, what those are. They're like phone sex lines. Like, hey, baby, I'm here to fulfill your fantasies. And it was real women talking to dudes. And it was like this whole convoluted business thing. Who cares? But I was so interested in like what guys were fantasizing about, right? I mean, hello? And if you if you want to kind of like skip the boring stuff, listen to the podcast. It's like everywhere podcasts are. The Operator, right? The Operator or Operators, eh, to me, what, one of those two. And go straight to episode four. It's called Hang Time. And it's literally just, it, it's the calls and like different guys and what their fantasies are. And like one time a wife calls in and this, well, what is my husband talking about? And she's like, man, I don't know. I didn't talk to your husband, you know? But it got me to thinking that like, this was such a booming business because men didn't feel like they could talk to their partners about their fantasies. That's really what it came down to. And the guys almost always said that. They're like, I don't wanna cheat on my wife. I don't wanna cheat on my girlfriend, I love her. But I can't tell her that I want a dog collar around my neck and I wanna eat dinner out of a dog bowl on the floor. She's gonna freak the fuck out. I can't tell her I wanna get fucked up the ass. She's gonna lose it, you know? I'm not gay. It's like. And they're like, honey, nobody thinks you're gay. A lot of guys request this. You know, they have these like, these accents. I just picture huge gold hoop earrings. He the huge. The bigger the hoop, the bigger the hoe. And these are too small. Not representative. Take them big. So I got to thinking like, how can we like give this, how can we make men feel comfortable to share their fantasies? Because remember, Studies show that the two reasons men cheat or anybody cheats is to feel alive and to explore different sides of their personalities. And I think you could easily say explore different fantasies, right? Like look at Tiger Woods. Blech. He cheated on his gorgeous Swedish wife, like this beautiful Swedish creature. She's not even human with like porn stars who were missing teeth. Why? Probably because he could say anything to those porn stars and they'd be like, okay, 
sure, that's not weird. I'm not shocked. He could, he could be as nasty as he want to be. And so it's not like he ever loved these people. It's not like he even probably wanted to fuck them. He just wanted to be able to express himself. And we talk about this in terms of shadow self, right? The key to seduction itself. The shadow self is a part of ourselves that we either can't or aren't having success telling the world about. You know, people don't get it or they don't want to get it or we can't share it. And so if someone can find someone who's like, I'm listening, I accept you, I see you. I like this shadow self. It's very addictive. And this 900 number thing proved that. I mean, men would get addicted to it. They'd spend thousands of dollars because they were finally being heard. And one of the things the girls were always taught is agree with everything. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. You are so right. One thing they always said is I'm into exactly what you're into. Like they would lead with that. It's like they didn't even know. And the guys were like, really? Men, right? So how could we let a guy feel heard, spice up our sex life, and maybe even kind of cheat proof our relationship? I've got the answer. Okay. This is what you do. Okay. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> it's tempting to want to like have a like a wrapped gift, you know? It's not just like this is what we're doing. It's like you want to like unwrap something. So you're going to have three different boxes. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm out of order. All right, so you're going to basically give a guy like a game show of fantasies. Behind door number one, we've got the slutty Catholic schoolgirl. okay? You're going to pick three fantasies. And at first when I was thinking about this, I was like, oh, a cool gift would be like, I will let you pick any fantasy you want and we'll do it. And I'm like, no, cause yuck. You know, guys are, Yo, you don't know what you're going to get. And like you, it, you have to be into it too. If it's like anal and you're like, let me just take some quaaludes. I don't know. So you leading off already means to him, she's into this. So he's going to feel more comfortable like going for it, right? Because you've already like asked and answered that this is something you're okay with. And it has to be something you're okay with though, girl. Like this really is crucial. Okay. Okay. And it doesn't matter where you are on that, on that sauciness spectrum. If you're like weird, I, I won't even say that weird. Just, okay. Or maybe less spicy. <laughs> That's fine. So you're going to pick three. One is going to be a fantasy of domination. One is going to be a fantasy of submission. And the third wild card, baby. Okay. In this podcast, the operator, a big, big, big thing guys wanted was to be dominated. I'm Mistress Ruby. You've been a bad boy. You're my little slut. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am what? Yes, I am, Mistress Ruby. That's right. Like, oh, like they, they like it. I talk, I'm pretty submissive in bed because I'm like a very dominant person all the time, right? And so I just kind of want to be, it's like, just leave me on my back and tell me what to do. Just like, shut me up. Just Choke me out and shut me up. I'm so tired of hearing my own voice. And a lot of powerful women are like that. In fact, like, I actually don't know a single woman who is dominant in the bedroom. And I feel like all my friends say the same thing. They're like, I was very dominant when I was younger because I didn't feel like I had a ton of personal power, like in my life, you know, I hadn't like really learned to speak up for myself and I had a shitty job and I felt like kind of oppressed because young women are. <laughs> so I wanted to like, rah, like exert that power in bed. Sex is about balance, right? Everything in life is about balance. So keep that in mind. Like if he's a high flying CEO, he might love the dominatrix fantasy. If he's like my fucking boss and blah, blah, blah. And he's like a work a day guy who feels put upon, he might really like it if he's more aggressive and assertive in bed, but you're going to give him the option. So dominant doesn't have to mean dominatrix. I mean, if that's a trend you, love that latex, love that spandex. Some other examples, a nurse, right? A teacher. Um, who else is dominant? Let me know. Like, I, I want to know. Uh, yeah, nurse and teacher are big. And I know that sounds cliche, but honestly, cliche and fantasy, perfect combination. Because when people form their fantasy, like habits, they're very, very young. They're essentially children. And a lot of times those fantasy habits are formed from like, commercials or movies or looking at their dad's playboys or whatever. Like they're not very nuanced, you know, they're not very out there. It's like, we're at the Bridgerton estate. It's like, no, 
she's my teacher. <laughs> you know, it's like the first people they fantasize about were like caregivers, nurses, teachers. Ugh, I know the mind is a disgusting place. So that's OK. Lean into that. It doesn't have to be very complicated or out there. It can be very run of the mill. And that's where you can start. Like you guys can get to the weird Bridgerton fantasies like down the road. Start simple. Also, this is going to be something that makes it cheaper for you because here's where the 20 bucks comes in. Halloween was just, just here. You can buy very cheap costumes at Goodwill for $5. You can get that little nursey outfit. Maybe it's missing the stethoscope. Maybe it's missing the whatever. You can kind of fill in the blanks for very, very, very cheap. This is not going to cost you a lot of money. And in fact, you might have stuff. So you're going to pick a dominant fantasy, right? You're the dominant one. Then you're going to pick a submissive fantasy, a maid, a schoolgirl. Again, the cliches are fine. You could even pick a little kitten. I'm just a kitten in the woods. I'm lost. Ooh, are you a big old lion? Uh-oh, are you stalking me? And I just don't even know that you're coming up behind me. Ah! You can make almost anything sexual. Trust me. <laughs> um, and then you're going to go wild card. Now this can be, you can go kind of goofy. You could be like anime. If he plays video games, dress up as a slutty version of some character in one of his movies or video games or something. I know it's like, they're always wearing these like weird straps. I don't know. Watch a YouTube video on how to do like anime makeup. If that's something he's into, or if he's into a certain celebrity, maybe try to dress up like her or memorize a scene from a movie that he really likes and probably jerks off to or something like that. You can be a Marvel character, or it could be something like you're, maybe you're just like preppy and, and normal in daily life. You dress up as a hipster. Maybe he like loves listening to like hipster music and you're like, I'm going to dress up as this weird hipster bitch. Look at my weird mismatched socks and these dumb baby bangs I cut myself. Don't cut baby bangs, but you know where I'm going with this. And, be, and, and then you can like meet him at a hipster bar. Okay, okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. But think about what he likes and what his fantasy might be. Like, you know, you know what I would like? I love the haka. <sighs> you know, the haka, it's like what... Samoans do. It's like a war dance. It, my friend and I, my friend Colleen and I will like do the haka with each other, just like send videos back and forth. We're like, oh, like it's so fucking sexy. When I see a man do it, I'm like, oh. I dated a Polynesian guy. I was like, do it again. He's like, please don't make me keep doing the haka. And he's like a professional rugby player. He's like, I don't want to do it. But like, I love that. I love Jason Momoa. So if I had a boyfriend like dress up in like the Polynesian, like, you know, fake tattoos and do the hawk, I'd be like, holy shit. Like, I would fucking love it. And like, serve me a drink with a little umbrella. I'm like, this is incredible, right? This is incredible. It's goofy, but it's cool. And it's fantasy fulfillment. And it would make me know he's actually listening to what I'm saying. So maybe it's a sexy cowgirl. Maybe it's like a, like a naughty corporate lady in like a pencil skirt. Ooh, bend me over this desk, daddy right? Listen to your man and pay attention to what he, he listens to, what he watches, what he talks about, the celebrities he likes, and try to get sort of this like police sketch of like a fantasy and go for it. Okay. So now comes the game show thing. Okay. So if you feel like buying all three of these costumes or making all three of these costumes, that's great. Take pictures. Get dressed up in each one. Have your friends come over and take a few slutty pictures. If you have a Polaroid, that's even better because Polaroids are, there's something very like sexual and dirty about a Polaroid. Ah. But if not, do it on your iPhone, take it to Staples, print it out on like photo paper, and then make those three boxes. Fantasy number one, fantasy number two, fantasy number three. You can make boxes really pretty very easily. Like Watch some YouTube videos on easy wrapping paper hacks. There's so many ways to do it really cheaply. And then fill the box, like put, put the photo in the box and maybe like one element. Like if you decide the dominant fantasy is nursey, put like the little toy stethoscope in there and be like, oh, or like your thigh high stockings that you'd wear. Huh? And if it's like the little Catholic school girl, put a rosary in there. I'm sorry, Jesus. You put these lustful feelings in my heart. It might've been the other guy down there. It might've been the devil. 
So putting it, because men are very tactile, right? They like to touch things. They like visual and they like to touch things. So give him something to touch. And then he's going to like imprint on that item in a very like sexual way, right? Then what you can do after the fact, which like I had a boyfriend do this to me. He tied me up with one of his ties one time. And then we went to a wedding a few days later. And I was like, you look so cute. He's like, is this tie familiar to you? And I was like, it was hot. It was way hot. So yeah, you like go casually out to dinner. Oops, that rosary just falls out of your purse. Oh, there's something in my pocket. It's all bulky. It's the thigh eyes. So it's going to bring that fantasy back. You know how serial killers like keep a token from their victims so they can like touch it and relive the glory? Yeah, it's like that. And then have him choose. And it's better if you can do this with as much sort of like a distance from the gift as possible. So you can present him with the three boxes, right? Put a one, two, and three on them. Then you want to give him a letter. And I, it would be cool if you make it rhyme, like a little like sexy poem, like, hear ye, hear ye, come and film me. I don't know. I'm just, I can't, I'm not a freestyle rapper. I'm not little Wayne for God's sakes. I can only do so much, but like make a little poem. It's like you have three fantasies at your disposal, like, and, and then like, let him look and let him decide, but maybe, hmm. I was going to say leave the room while he does, but no, like, like be there and watch him. Cause then, and just sit like a little Sphinx cat, just sit like a little Persian cat. And he'd be like, I could choose any one of these. Like, that's right. Really? Mm hmm. And look, you can decide when to give him that gift. He, he'd be like, the nurse. You'd be like, you sure about that? Yes. Okay. Don't move. It starts now. So you can like fulfill the fantasy right then. Or, or if you want to build a little bit more hype, you could say, you've made your choice, but I decide when. The definition of pleasure is not getting what you want right away. And fantasy is all about anticipation. And that's something they talk about in this podcast. It's like you want to keep the guy on the line as long as possible, obviously, to make money. But it, it makes it better for them. You're not just like, all right, fine, jerk yourself off. It's like, no, I didn't say you could yet. Don't touch yourself. I want you to picture me licking a lollipop. Right? So you want to draw that. You want to heighten that experience. He's going to think about it. Maybe the next day you slip another Polaroid into his pocket. You text him a picture of you all dressed up like a naughty nurse. You just really build that anticipation. And then when you're ready, you can be like, tonight's the night. Look, really? That's what I said. Get on the bed. And here is the important part, because it's not just about saying you're going to do it. And then you get there and you're in this dumb nurse's outfit and you're like, I mean, should I test you for COVID? I don't know. <laughs> you got to actually fulfill the fantasy. A lot of people think the fantasy fulfillment and role playing has to be like act four, scene 11. Like it doesn't have to be long. It really doesn't because you, especially by this time you've like gotten him all worked up and he's like, ah. so it probably isn't going to last too, too long. That's okay. But what you want to do is have a script. Cannot stress this enough. Have a script. I've done a lot of role playing with boyfriends. I always made a script. Like I would type it out. I wouldn't be like, okay, now you take yours. Line, what's my line? Director? Okay, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that. But when I type it out, then it kind of imprints in my mind. I can go back to it and be like, okay, so I'm gonna talk about this first. I'm gonna say, ooh, you feel like you're burning up. I think we better find out what's wrong with you, right? And then we go, mm, uh-oh, I'm gonna have to do a very thorough exam. Snap those gloves. Why do we want to plan this ahead of time? Because in the moment, it's going to be tough, especially if this isn't like something that you're used to doing with your boyfriend, like maybe a little bit here and there. But if this is like totally out of y'all's wheelhouse, you don't want to be trying to improv this fantasy on the fly. It's really hard. And especially when we're in like an aroused state or even just nervous, because I even I get nervous, like doing like fantasy stuff. Like I'm like, I because I don't want to laugh. I don't want to like break character because then it can kind of like disrupt the fantasy. Unless you can learn to weave those giggles in. You're like, <laughs> the glove broke. <laughs> Uh-oh. I guess I'll just have to leave you here to think about what you've done while I go get another. Instead of, 
Trevor, I'm sorry the glove broke. Just hold on. No, just hold on. I'm going to go get another one. Whatever's happening, whether it's something in your eye or you got to pee or the glove broke or whatever, if you put it in like sexy terms, then suddenly it seems so intentional. But practice makes perfect and a script really does help. So yeah, when you're in an aroused state, your brain literally shuts down. Like, do you know that when you're attracted to someone, the part of your brain in charge of making decisions shuts off? Shuts right off. When you feel lust, you're like, oh, that's why people get pregnant without me to do. That's why STDs go around, but we're not talking about that. It's gross. So you're going to have a script and you're going to have a sort of like storyboard in your mind for how you want this to go. Like instead of being like, okay, well, now my top's off and I don't know. Even if you're the fantasy that he's choosing is where you're submissive, that's okay. You can still kind of like be in charge because he might not know what to do either. And you can be like, I want you to like, put your dick in between my tits and blah, 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 blah. Like you can say what you want him to do and sort of like guide this ship without being dominant. Does that make sense? You could have an idea. It's like, daddy, I would love it if you flipped me over and bent me over the bed and told me what a bad girl I am and punish me. Right? So if you can kind of have a sort of loose storyboard, almost as though it is a scene in a movie, like I have always wanted to do a movie. I mean, I've wanted to be in a movie in general, but where there was a sex scene because it would be fun to like rehearse it. I'm not saying I want to be a porn star. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I mean, if it was Richard Madden though, Jon Snow, I wouldn't. Don't tell me if he's gay. I just don't want to know. Just let me have this, okay? They get all the good ones. But they have to re rehearse the scene. They have to block it. Okay, we start by the bed and then we move over to the desk and then we end up on the floor and blah, blah, blah. And then they kind of fill in the gaps. We move to the bed and she says this and then we do that. So in your mind, kind of go through that. Of course, leave room for spontaneity. Don't worry too much. Like, it's not like, this is the wrong scene. You're on page 34 and we're still on page 18. It's okay. Okay. So you're going to come up with some fantasies. Submissive, dominant, wild card. Okay. You're going to buy some costumes, cheap. There's so many cheap ways to do this. Like, and there's expensive ways, but there's definitely cheap ones. Like, or if maybe just the wild card is like lingerie playboy. Like if he loves Pamela Anderson, get a cheap red swimsuit, draw on those meth ass eyebrows, like put some blonde, like streaks in your hair, just like the spray paint, not spray paint, but you know what I mean? The hairspray kinds of things. And you know, it doesn't have to be super complicated. My hack for lingerie is always TJ Maxx. And when I wear lingerie with a guy, I always have one thing in my hand, a pair of scissors. I want him to cut it off because lingerie is complicated. They don't know what they're supposed to do with it. It's like a beautifully wrapped package. Wrapping paper is lingerie. Lingerie is wrapping paper. And so if a, a guy's like, I, how, how do I get this? Off? Do I touch it? Is it made of sugar? I don't know what this is. So I present myself in my lingerie. I'm on the bed. And I say, you want me to take this off? He'd be like, yeah. Like, how bad do you want me to take it off? Really bad. I think you should take it off. I, no, actually, I don't want you to take it off. I want you to cut it off. I want to know who the man is here. Show me what you can do. It's Wolverine shit. Or if I don't have scissors, um, I just tell him to rip it. And because cheap lingerie rips really easily. And I don't repeat lingerie. It's like, it's like wrapping paper. It's one and done. Also, consider the whipped cream bikini. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Varsity Blues. I grew up on it. Like my generation, like I'm a millennial beta, an elder millennial. Varsity Blues, oh, every dude knows what the whipped cream bikini is. And actually, when I was dating a 20-year-old, he knew what it was too. And I did it on his 21st birthday. James, I missed him. I tied him to a chair and did the whipped cream bikini. He loved it. <laughs> uh, I miss him. Anyway, not relevant. Just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> like the whipped cream. Whipped cream melts really fast. In the movie, she was using shaving cream. Whipped cream melts incredibly fast. So it's kind of a better thing to bring into the bedroom and just like squirt here and there. It's like, put your mouth there. Mm, put your mouth there. Whatever. Anyway. We do a whole video on the whipped cream bikini. So I think this is a really highly customizable gift. Again, it's cheap and it is not something he is going to ever forget. This 
like my boy and the chair and the whipped cream bikini will live in infamy, not even just with him, but like with his whole group of friends. It's okay if he tells people because it's bomb. Like this is, this is going to turn out great for you. But if you don't want to tell people, just say so. This will live in infamy for the rest of his life. For the rest of his life, he will remember the fantasy of Christmas. You will be this Christmas succubus hovering above his bed in all of his nighttime fantasies until the day God takes him from the earth. And isn't that, isn't immortality the best Christmas gift of all? Because who is Christmas about? Jesus, he's had some staying power. <laughs> So I want to know your submissive fantasy cliches. And again, cliche is good. Cliche is very good. I want to know your dominant fantasy cliches. And if you were going to do a wild card for your boyfriend, or if a dude was going to do a wild card for you, what would it be? Would it be like Zac Efron in High School Musical? Or I'm just thinking that's an easy costume that a guy could probably procure. Or like a, ooh, like a soldier. Ooh, ooh, or like a cowboy. And they've got all those ropes and like, like metal things and like rugs made of animal skin. Mm, think about it. Because you know what? If you do this and it goes well, Valentine's Day is just around the corner. Shalentine's Day. It would be a great thing to be like, you know what I would love? I would love that gift in reverse. I would love to see what you come up with. Anything is going to be so hot and so cool. I mean, this could be something you guys do every other month. Like, you guys could do this for all the holidays. Is it Arbor Day? Get out your fucking fantasy boxes, baby. So tell me your thoughts. Uh, tell me what you are planning on getting your significant other. And we are going to be back. See you later, chat.